Exactly. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so as uh, Yowali was saying, my name is Alessia and I work for CCM, Committee for Medical Cooperation, which is one of the partners of the IC Health Project. The reason why I am the one delivering this presentation is that uh, CCM was the, the partner in charge of coordinating the survey uh, that was conducted at the beginning of uh, the project to, to check, to investigate which are the levels of digital literacy, health li literacy and digital health literacy of the target courts that we are working with. Uh, so just to, to start, basically the aims of this uh, initial uh, part of the, of the project was to understand the, the, the knowledge, the needs of the target courts that Yowali was mentioning that are children aged 10, 13, adolescents aged 14, 18 years old, pregnant and lactating women, patients with diabetes type 1 or type 2, and elderly people from 60 years on. Uh, the strategy that we as partner decided to implement to conduct this survey was, uh, uh, let's say, a multifaceted, a multi-component strategy uh, envisaging, first of all, a literature review of uh, literature both at the European level and at national level on the digital literacy, health literacy or digital health literacy of this course. Then we developed a questionnaire that we submitted to a sample of uh, this uh, representative of this court. We translated the questionnaires, of course, in all the languages of the countries that are involved. And we could also organize some focus groups with the representative of, the, of this court in two of the countries of the project, namely Italy and Spain. Uh, the uh, findings that we find out from the first part of the survey, which was the literature review, uh, basically uh, underlined the fact that in terms of digital literacy, over the past five, uh, ten, five years, the number of people that in Europe are very familiar with the use of digital devices that could be uh, smartphones, uh, uh, laptops, uh, desktop computers and so on, is really increasing, uh, more or less 99% of the population in Europe, or at least in the countries where we are working with, uh, have this uh, uh, familiarity with, the, with these devices. But it doesn't mean that their skills in terms of digital literacy, uh, that means how they use these devices, uh, is uh, uh, the same in all the countries is, uh, the, and is the same across these uh, uh, population groups. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, population uh, trends, uh, we find out that uh, uh, internet is uh, one of the first uh, sources of information on health for most populations. So basically all European people uh, trust uh, the doctors or physicians uh, as a first source of information on internet. And then usually uh, internet is the second source of information on health, followed by friends or people from the close family or even other traditional media like newspapers or television. Uh, unfortunately, what we found out, but we were not so, um, I mean, surprised about it, is the fact that though many people are familiar with the use of IT devices and the use of IT devices in relation to health, uh, a very minority of people uh, knows what MOOC are and are familiar with the uh, following online courses. So one of the uh, greatest challenges of our project is uh, to make this uh, uh, tool uh, for uh, online training, um, I mean, um, familiar for people and appealing for people. Um, Okay, and from this uh, um, literature review, we also could uh, uh, try to, to pick some uh, recommendations that we are taking into account now that we are working with our communities of practices and that we are developing the MOOC. First of all, we understood that uh, we cannot de develop MOOC that are the same MOOCs for people from uh, the same courts, but living in different countries and being familiar with different styles of life. Uh, people from Sweden have a very different lifestyle from people from Italy or Spain or Belgium. So that's why we're working with community, uh, communities of practices at national level. And also we find out that uh, there are different needs and different uh, feelings and different perceptions of MOOCs across these target groups. 
Uh, we also found that uh, uh, we cannot, uh, I mean, um, create MOOC based only on the training techniques, but we also have to, to think about the fact that internet is a tool for uh, entertainment, for gaming, uh, for communication, for social media. That's uh, how uh, most young people, for example, children or adolescents, uh, think and use smartphones and apps. So we have to develop MOOC that are not not only informative and educative, but also uh, a, a tool for entertainment. Then uh, we have to think about um, uh, cultural differences or language differences or inequalities between target groups. So we should develop this MOOC in order them to close any possible gap and make them uh, as much as possible available for uh, any kind of, uh, of populations. So from the, from the ones in one social class and the ones in the upper classes. And then we also have to think about the uh, normative and regulatory uh, framework that we are working with. Um, regulations and legislations about uh, uh, digital literacy, about health literacy uh, at European level and at national level in the eight countries that we are working are totally different. So we have to take them uh, into account and in order to, to be sure to, to, to produce some uh, um, tools that can be not only useful, but that uh, are uh, properly uh, adopted in each own country. Uh, when it comes to the exploratory survey that we conducted, as I was mentioning before, we decided to develop a questionnaire. Uh, actually, two questionnaires were developed. One for uh, the minors groups, so for the group of children and adolescents, and the other one for adults. We decided to, uh, to divide these questionnaires because we understood that uh, the capacities and the, the skills of uh, adults and of minors uh, were not the same, of course. Uh, all, both, uh, both the questionnaires were mm, divided, they organized in four sections. The last one was the section about personal information that was uh, uh, put in the, in the last phase of the questionnaire in order not to, to stress the participants at the beginning. The first part of the questionnaire was on digital literacy and was meant to investigate the skills, the interests, and the needs in terms of digital literacy uh, of how to use IT devices of these five uh, target groups. The second session was uh, meant at investigating health literacy. That means uh, how people understand information about health, for example, that is provided by doctors, by pharmacists, by physicians, by other means of information. And it was based on a questionnaire that is already validated. It is uh, the EU um, HLS uh, survey, uh, which is a validated survey at European level uh, that is available in uh, three versions. One has uh, six questions, another one has 16 questions, and the most completed one, 48 questions. We decided to utilize the middle uh, version, which has uh, 16 questions, in order it not to, to be too, uh, too heavy and too difficult to be compiled by our target groups. The third part of the questionnaire was on uh, uh, digital health literacy. That means digital and health literacy competencies combined. And it was also based on a validated scales, ELS scales, that is another scale validated at European level, uh, which was complemented by other questions meant to investigating mo mostly the frequency uh, with which uh, people of this target group utilize internet to get information about health. Uh, what was very difficult to do was uh, translating these questionnaires into the eight languages of our project because these validated questionnaires usually are validated only in English. Some of them were validated in some other languages but not in all the eight languages of our project. That's why this phase took a lot of time and all our partners were involved. 
Uh, another component of our survey uh, was the, the focus groups uh, which were carried out in Spain and in Italy with the, each of the target cohort. So one target group was conducted with children, one target group with adolescents, another, uh, another focus group with uh, um, patients with type 1 diabetes, uh, which are basically adolescents because type 1 diabetes affects uh, younger people. Then one, two target group with pregnant and lactating women, one in Italy and one in Spain, one target group with elderly people in Italy, and two target group with patients with diabetes type 2 that more usually are older people. Uh, now I come with to the results, to the data that were collected through the survey, through the questionnaires. So we uh, administered on the whole 1,704 questionnaires, uh, 780 to uh, minors, so to children and adolescents, and the remaining to the adult population, pregnant and lactating women, patients with diabetes and elderly, and the eight focus groups were conducted. Um, in between uh, December last year and April 2017. Which are the main challenges that we, we encountered? First of all, um, I mean, uh, some administrative issues, uh, mostly related to the um, ethical uh, approval of our uh, protocols by the universities that are our partners or by national or local authorities. Uh, it took a lot, uh, so that's why the time frame that we had planned at the beginning of the survey uh, should be post slightly postponed postponed uh, because of, of the time of this, of this approval from the ethical committees. Also reaching the target was not easy, that's why we decided to enable partners to administer the questionnaires in different ways. Most partners uh, did it online, so basically all the questionnaires were um, uh, uploaded on the EU platform for questionnaires and the link was sent to respondents. Uh, while some other partners, most of them working with children or adolescents, uh, preferred the administration of the questionnaires in hard copies uh, because they were working, for example, with school classes and children at school. Uh, another uh, another, uh, two, another um, lessons learned that, uh, that we got uh, was that uh, it's very, very important to have a good teamwork uh, among all partners. This was the first activity of the project and that most of the partners that were working together had never had the chance to meet before, had never had the chance to know how they were working and that was challenging. So uh, coming to trust each other, coming to understand which were the um, capacities the skills uh, of each partner would, I mean, took, uh, took some time at the beginning. Uh, what about the findings on the old old courts? So the courts of uh, pregnant and lactating women, patients with diabetes type 1 and type 2, and elderly people. In terms of uh, digital literacy, uh, what we found basically is that uh, all the courts, uh, even elderly, uh, in, the, in the target of the responses that we collected, have uh, quite a good familiarity with IT devices. So that could be either laptop, desktop, or smartphones. Uh, laptop and smartphones are the most preferred ones. Uh, but also we found that there is a, a clear correlation between uh, the capacities of use of these devices and the age. So, bare, um, I mean, uh, merely uh, the higher is the age, so the elderly is the person, uh, the lower is uh, the digital literacy and digital skill. In terms of uh, health literacy, uh, basically, there's a, a, quite a, a gap in between uh, southern European countries uh, that are mostly Italy, Spain, even Belgium was considered southern European countries in this context, and northern European countries like Sweden, like Denmark, Germany, or the Netherlands in terms of health literacy. So apparently people living in the north uh, are much, much more um, uh, self-confident on health information that they receive by doctors, uh, by physicians, uh, by other media, media or by internet on health much more than uh, their peers in uh, the southern countries. 
In terms of digital health literacy, so these literacies uh, combined, uh, we found that most commonly the cohort of pregnant and lactating women, and in particular lactating women, have usually the highest uh, level of digital health literacy across all countries, most likely because they are the ones using internet for health-related information more frequently. So in this court, uh, a majority of women respond, uh, responded that they are used to look for health information on internet even on daily basis. Uh, for, of, of course, they started during pregnancy and then they continue also uh, after delivery. Um, and the pregnant and the lactating women is also the cohort with the uh, highest uh, health literacy among the adult cohorts. Uh, an interesting issue has to, uh, I mean, has to um, uh, be mentioned about the um, patients with diabetes uh, cohort, uh, where a gap was found between patients uh, with type 1 diabetes and patients with type 2 diabetes. If the first ones have a quite good level of digital health literacy, the second ones are uh, one of the uh, poorest scoring cohorts at European level. Uh, what about the minor scores, so the questionnaires that we administered to children and adolescents? Um, for um, for uh, what di digital literacy is concerned, uh, usually adolescents have a, a higher level of digital literacy than children, even though uh, also children are quite familiar with the use of uh, mobile devices, IT devices that most com commonly are provided to them by parents. Uh, children across all Europe, especially across uh, southern European countries, have also some limitations in using IT devices, uh, most commonly time limits. For example, they cannot use them more than one or two hours per day, while these limitations decrease for the uh, adolescent cohort. In terms of health literacy, uh, our findings uh, were um, biased by the fact that we could not adapt the questionnaire, the uh, health literacy scale that I was mentioning before, to the minor courts. So the validated questionnaire uh, was validated for people of 18 years and above, not for minors. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we, agree, oh, well, we, we agreed that it was not proper to adapt this questionnaire to uh, the children, so the questions may have been too difficult for children, too difficult to be understood for children, so the findings that, uh, uh, that we got um, are not considered of high scientific level. Uh, but uh, in general, we found that uh, health literacy of adolescents is much more developed than health literacy uh, in children, and that uh, around one-third of adolescents and one-fourth of uh, children across European level have an adequate level of health literacy. In terms of uh, digital health literacy, um, what uh, was most striking was the fact that most uh, children and adolescents uh, do use uh, internet for health-related purposes, and they are most, mostly interested in information about uh, uh, physical appearance and well-being. So basically, we adopted um, an idea, a concept of health uh, as the WHO one. So health is not just the, the absence of diseases, but a complete status of a physical, mental, and psychological well-being. So in this uh, exception, children and adolescents do use internet for, uh, for health-related re information. They mostly do it by using a general engines like Google uh, or like Wikipedia, uh, which is very much utilized, especially in Southern European countries. Uh, but they also uh, ask for a second opinion to either their families or their doctors. So apparently their digital health literacy level is, um, is as a starting point, is quite good. Of course, none of them is familiar with MOOC. They have never heard about it, and uh, it would be very difficult for us to make them appealing. 
Some of the limitations of the survey I should mention is uh, about the, uh, the sample. So we couldn't get uh, a representative samples of our cohorts, of the populations. So uh, we got a convenient samples. That means that our findings uh, cannot be uh, generalized, cannot be applied to the general populations. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. We really have to wrap it up. So. Okay, sorry. Um, about the, the focus group, uh, basically uh, the, the focus group were meant at uh, getting some uh, more information complementing the results of the, of the survey, which were more qualitative and that could help us understand uh, on which topic to focus the, the MOOC, uh, which are the most, uh, uh, most uh, common fears and doubts of these courts on, uh, the, on, on the topic of, of health and digital digital literacy and digital health literacy. Uh, I will not go into details, uh, but basically what we found out is that uh, uh, most of the target courts uh, would like uh, uh, the uh, community of practices uh, to be composed not only of representative of the target course, but also of representative of uh, uh, health professionals in order to compare uh, ideas, uh, views, and share uh, their point of view with the health professionals. And, and also we found out that uh, uh, most of them, especially elderly people, are very concerned concerned with privacy issues, so they have uh, a lack of trust on the internet because they don't know how their personal information are going to be managed, uh, where are they going to be seen, who is going to access them, so privacy is a major concern. Uh, from the findings of our surveys, uh, we drafted the profiles. So we drafted uh, one profile per each court, per each country. So we have a profile of uh, Italian children, of uh, Italian adolescents, and so on. Uh, and the profile is divided into three uh, main areas, digital literacy skills, uh, health literacy skills, and digital health literacy skills. From these profiles, uh, we are going to work with the communities of practices and we are going to decide together with the representative of these uh, uh, target groups that are going to be involved in the communities of practices uh, what to focus on in the MOOC. The key pillars, uh, the key findings of, uh, of our uh, I mean, uh, project based on the findings of the survey uh, is the fact that we have to use a strong theoretical background uh, both in terms of uh, behavioral change techniques and in terms of communication techniques in order to make the MOOC as much as effective and appealing as possible. Then we have to try to engage the communities of practices both offline and online because uh, relying only on the online uh, tool would, uh, uh, would not enable to create a teamwork. Then we have to uh, adopt a cross-target uh, cross and cross-country flexible approach because the needs, uh, the habits, uh, the feelings and the culture, the way of lives of different courts in different countries are totally different and commonly are not comparable. And then we also have to be as much as realistic and result-oriented as possible. So we cannot think about develop MOOCs that are at university level, that are like, I don't know, uh, four hours uh, MOOC, but just some very small pills, very small um, MOOC combining uh, videos, uh, texts, uh, um, pictures, uh, quizzes, and so on, that could give some inputs to our target groups on how to use internet to look for, appraise, and uh, um, utilize health information. And then we are integrating a monitoring and evaluation strategy on the MOOC development in order to uh, be able to measure the effectiveness and uh, the satisfaction of the uh, public on these MOOCs. Um, and then we have also to uh, build the competences of the national coordinators, coordinators that are the staff of our partners that are directly working with our communities of practices. So basically my presentation is over. I wanted to thank you all of all, all of you and also all the partners of the project that were collaborating with the survey. Thank you so much.